One key factor in choosing a medical school to apply to is the school's curriculum. But what are the medical school curriculums here in the Philippines? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. In the Philippines, there are three kinds of curriculums mainly utilized in teaching medicine here in the Philippines. These are the traditional method, module-based curriculums, and PBL, or problem-based learning. The types of curriculums weren't something I was completely aware of when I was applying to medical school, so I'm making this video because I find it'll be very helpful for helping people make informed decisions about choosing which medical school to attend. But before we start, regardless of the medical school curriculum of the school you decide to attend, Learning in medical school is hard because of the amount of information we are expected to learn. Rather, it's important to have the grit to push through the challenges that you'll face within those 4-5 to five years. In one of my favorite quotes from the psychologist Angela Duckworth, she says, There are no shortcuts to excellence. Developing real expertise, figuring out really hard problems, it all takes time. Longer than most people tend to imagine. Grit is about working on something you care about so much that you're willing to stay loyal to it. It's about doing what you love, not just falling in love, but staying in love. And despite the differences the three main types of curriculums have here in the Philippines, they still all cover the same type of content. Meaning, first year will cover the normal for anatomy, physiology, histology, and so on. And second year will cover the abnormal, pathology, microbiology, pharmacology, and other subjects related to diseases of the human body. Meanwhile, third year will focus on trying to teach you the clinical applications of the knowledge you received in first and second year as a means of bridging your knowledge as you enter clerkship and internship in your fourth and fifth year. So with that out of the way, let's discuss the most commonly used curriculum, the traditional model. The traditional curriculum in medical school is comparable to the curriculum we experienced back in high school and college. And this is properly employed by schools like USD, FEU, and UERM. In this type of curriculum, each area of study like anatomy, histology, physiology have their own designated subject and act independently of one another. What this means is that if one subject finishes the coverage for an entire organ system, it will not wait for the others to catch up, rather it will move on to the next organ system. This is a downside mention when I interviewed my friend Magu in my med school deep dive episode in USD. Is there ever a time where like one subject is already in the next organ system? and it's already leaving the other uh, yeah. subjects behind. Oh yeah, that happens. I think it's really hard actually because it does happen often. However, despite this drawback, concepts can actually be repeated across different subjects. And this also helps a space repetition so you get exposed to the same concept over and over. And because the nature of this curriculum spaces out the exams far apart in a midterm and finals fashion, Apps like Aki are very useful in this type of curriculum because you can better apply the concepts of active recall and space repetition as you accumulate the knowledge over those several weeks. And as an added bonus, given that the midterms and finals are also subject-based, it kind of recreates the Philippine licensure exam because at least at the time of this recording, the physician licensure exam is still subject-based. The major downside of this curriculum style is that if you're the type of person who doesn't like to study very often, it'll be very hard to cram for the exams in this curriculum because there will be so much to catch up on and you might end up not being able to cover everything in time for the exam. In addition, in-person and mandatory lectures are common in this type of curriculum. So if you're not the type of person who likes to attend class often, you might struggle also with this type of curriculum. The module-based curriculum and the traditional curriculum are similar in that they're very lecture-based curriculums. But I find the module-based curriculum is like eating small frequent meals Whereas the traditional curriculum is like eating three square meals a day. Popular examples of schools that use this curriculum are the UP College of Medicine and ASMBH. In the module based system, or organ system integrated as it's called in UPCM, each organ system is integrated into its own module, meaning that the subjects that would normally be present in the traditional model are combined into a single module under each organ system. So for example, if you're learning cardiology, everything that you'll be learning from anatomy to physiology will all be related to cardiology and you'll never skip over into the next organ system. The beauty of this is that you get to understand the organ system from the different perspectives of each subject and integrate them better. Similarly, the exams integrate all the different subjects into one big exam instead of having separate exams like in the traditional model. The major downside of this is that exams in this type of curriculum are more frequent. For example, in ASFPH, we have exams on a weekly basis, and although the coverage of each exam will be less compared to a typical traditional system exam, you have less time to study so there's less application of space repetition. And on top of that, like the traditional curriculum, there are also a lot of mandatory lectures. 
What I personally like about the module-based curriculum, at least in how my school does it, is the allocation of parts of our grade to non-exam requirements. Now, exams still carry a big portion of the grade, but the SGDs, case write-ups, and other creative outputs still carry enough weight that it could make up a poor performance in an exam, allowing students to show off their knowledge of the subject matter in ways exams can. Traditional module-based curriculums are ideal if you're the type of person who will thrive in the type of curriculum that's highly structured where you're given the information that you're expected to learn. But what if you're the type of person who learns better from figuring things out on your own? Then maybe the problem-based learning curriculum is the best thing for you. As I mentioned earlier, PBL stands for problem-based learning and it's a system wherein students learn the concepts to sample problems given to them by their professors. And this type of curriculum is heavily employed in schools like Cebu Doctors University and Cebu Institute of Medicine. In this type of curriculum, students are divided into small groups where they're tasked to figure out the cases given to them. It's a bit reversed to the traditional module-based systems where you're expected to apply the concepts after you learn it. But here, you learn the concepts through application. And from there, the group will divide the task amongst its members so that you can search for the information more efficiently. My friend Grace Nariza has a video that explains this topic more in depth on her channel, so I'll leave a link to it down below so you can check it out if you want to learn more about it later. The PBL curriculum definitely shares a more active way of learning the material because if you're not trying to learn the material on your own, you'll often end up not being sure of what's going on. In addition, the curriculum offers a great deal of flexibility in terms of your time since there's a lot of allocated study time for you to study on your own. The role of your professors in this type of curriculum is to simply clear up any misconceptions you may have or any mistakes you may have made during the SGDs, as well as share some high-yield facts about the topic that you were discussing. In my opinion, this type of curriculum is ideal for helping students understand the concepts and apply active recall. However, the outcome is heavily dependent on the student and they may not be even sure if what they're studying is correct or wrong. The benefit of having an expert lecture is that they already parsed through the information and selected what is important to know and what is nice to know. So if you're the type of person who learns best from being handed the information, maybe PBL is not the best curriculum for you. Now it's important to know that not all medical schools are purely traditional, module-based, or PBL. Most of the top performing medical schools in the country incorporate aspects of the other curriculums on top of their main curriculum. For example, in St. Luke's, they're a traditional curriculum in that they are subject-based for the most part, but they incorporate the module-based aspect by having six-week blocks dedicated to a particular organ system. So despite being a subject-based curriculum, they'll never overshoot into the next organ system because each subject is confined within the organ system for that six-week block. Even in ASMH, which is a module-based curriculum, it still incorporates some aspects of PBL by having regular SGDs in every module. So to recap what we discussed in this video, we went over the three major med school curriculums here in the Philippines and discussed the pros and cons of each. Firstly, I find that the module-based curriculum is the best overall since it allows you to integrate different perspectives within each organ system, but doesn't force you to figure it out on your own like in PBL. That said, after speaking to some of my friends who've experienced more than one curriculum from Chancery Medical Schools, they said that you should choose a curriculum that best fits your learning style. And if you want to know how you can further optimize your learning in medical school, check out my study playlist here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.